Greetings, Emmett here from readingforwisdom.com. Now, as you can imagine from the subject matter of this uh, series, uh, I'm a big fan of books about books. I've got a load of them in my collection, and they range in style and theme. Here's a really good example. This is a book called 100 Great Books. Pretty self-explanatory. It's uh, edited by John Canning uh, with uh, a nice introduction from Lawrence Durrell. And this really takes us on a guide from the beginnings of literature from Homer's Iliad and takes us right through the to the relatively modern day, uh, Lampedusa's The Leopard. Um, so there's about a hundred works that they feature in here. Really, really nice introduction. A real heavyweight in the genre of books about books is the great Harold Bloom's The Western Canon. Uh, we're going to feature this in a future episode, but let's just tell you that this is a magisterial trip through some of the greatest pieces of literature of all time. But the book we're featuring today is 12 Books That Changed the World by the great Melvin Bragg. And uh, this is a fantastic uh, read, and it's a slightly eccentric one because Bragg never plays it by the book, uh, so to speak. Um, those of you familiar with uh, Bragg through his many, many decades of uh, broadcasting in Britain will know that this guy is a real broad thinker. He's definitely a person who has been educated in breadth and depth, uh, a great novelist. Um, a great writer of sort of histories and non-fiction. He also presents uh, just about my favourite, favourite um, serial um, of all time, and that is BBC's long-running In Our Time. It's a, a radio programme on uh, BBC Radio 4, and it is a very, very simple format. Every week they bring in three... Uh, academic specialists, uh, but also very uh, fluent um, and easy to understand academic specialists, and they dissect uh, in, in a very open layman sort of fashion a particular topic, and they cover history, literature, philosophy, science, and a really, really uh, wonderful thing it is. Uh, we'll be providing a link below to the In Our Time library where you'll be able to access uh, well over 25 years of brilliant programming. And Bragg is uh, somebody who can really marshal his contributors' uh, th thoughts. Uh, before that, uh, Bragg was also uh, well known for his South Bank show, great television show uh, on the arts. So in this book, Bragg takes 12 books that he has thought about and thought about and said, here are 12 things that I'd really like to highlight as having changed the world. Now, unlike a lot of other approaches to great books, Bragg takes a very broad view of what a book is. So he certainly features traditional uh, books um, that would be considered great. Uh, Principia Mathematica by um, Sir Isaac Newton is one of them. Uh, Origin of the Species by uh, Charles Darwin uh, is another, um, as is Adam Smith's Wealth of Nations. So those books are typically on great book lists. Um, but rather unconventionally, he also features uh, art. Arkwright's uh, patent for his uh, uh, spinning machine and uh, a patent for an invention. Uh, you would hardly think that as, um, uh, as a book, but uh, Bragg really argues that it can be seen as such, and it was certainly a publication that changed the world. It changed industry, it made Arkwright a very uh, wealthy person. Um, another uh, non-traditional uh, type of book that he features here is um, uh, Faraday's papers on uh, electricity. Very world-changing. But probably my favourite of the unconventional works that he features is the Football Association rule book. Let's have a little look at that. So published in 1863, the Football Association's Laws is undoubtedly a very, very, very influential publication. Let's let Mal uh, Melvin uh, make the argument. The game of football has, over the last century, totally changed the worlds of sport, the media and leisure. 
It was able to do that solely because of a book of laws, most commonly called rules, written by a group of former public school men in 1863 in London. Without that book, the beautiful game, as the great Brazilian football baller Pelle called it, would not have kicked off. Because of that book, and the proselytizing enthusiasm of British sailors and merchants and adventurers on their expeditions around the planet, it is now estimated that this year, 2006, 8 out of 10 people in the world are expected to watch something of the World Cup being held in Germany. Football is played worldwide by more than 1.5 million teams and 300,000 clubs. This does not include the hundreds and thousands of schools and youth clubs. There are over 5 million officials involved in the game, more than 20 million women play the game and their numbers are growing. It has become part of the national consciousness of almost every country in the world. It would be fair to say that it has become more than just a game. It attracts tribal followings, it produces icons, it invokes passions sometimes not too far removed from extreme politics, and a devotion which has religious connotations. It is a colossal money spinner and money eater on an ever-increasing scale. Now that's a fair argument for the inclusion of the Football Association's rules into his 12 great books. And another of the 12 books that changed the world that Bragg features here, and I think this um, is a wonderful pick, and it's a true, truly great pick, and that is the King James Bible. Now, we tend to think about the Bible in purely sort of religious terms, but as Bragg has argued, the Bible was a piece of classic literature, beautifully written in its King James translation. And this was something that spread all over the world. It spread literacy. And it really contributed to the uh, voice of the English-speaking people, to the consciousness of the English-speaking people, to the language itself. Let's hear Bragg make his argument. The publication of the Bible in English and its reach through the churches to so many people whose ancestors had been hitherto ignorant of its content enabled there to be a common debate and discussion. This undoubtedly helped lay the ground for democracy. Now that this Bible of many books of tumultuous, extraordinary awesome events, Delphic sayings and fierce strictures was on the street, argument was licensed. You could make criticism of tyranny through a debate on one of the kings. You could plan revolution through a dis discussion of the true meaning of the Sermon on the Mount. You could out-prophecy the prophets and talk of vengeance, justice, a promised land, another Eden, a city of God to be attained on earth through impeccably correct religious references to the Bible. The Bible could set you free. In the English Civil War, a furnace of ideological conflict, Charles I was convinced that unrestricted access to the Bible, conjured up and enforced by his father, had nourished the discontent of the people. Throughout the Civil War, one extreme group after another sought and found the justification for its radical social views and political actions in the sacred pages of the King James Bible. Now there you go, I think Bragg really hits the nail on the head. Translating the Bible into English and into a wonderfully accessible poetic English, uh, largely due to the uh, writings of the persecuted William Tyndale, who uh, unfortunately was martyred before uh, he got to see the fruit of his works. Um, so arguably this, this publication um, opened the voice of the people and certainly freed them from the constraints uh, imposed by the earlier churches uh, and their keeping the Bible uh, closed and the messages of the Bible closed into them through it being confined to Latin and uh, Greek, obviously in uh, other parts of Christendom. 
So, a book I highly recommend reading, as much for Bragg's beautifully literate style. He's, he's, a, he's a lovely writer. Uh, I do recommend listening to In Our Time. I'm sure uh, once you get to uh, listen to that great BBC series, you'll be hooked for life. Um, some of the other titles that are featured in here, uh, William Shakespeare, The First Folio, uh, not uh, a book as such, a collection of plays, but certainly a rich addition to our uh, literature, our language, something that shaped us nearly as much as the King James Bible did. Uh, Mary Stopes, a uh, great uh, work on re uh, women's liberation, uh, is included in here, and justifiably so, um, as is the predecessor from uh, Mary uh, Wollstonecraft, The um, Vindication of the Rights of Women. So this is a packed volume, 12 um, arguable uh, books to include, but um, certainly once you've read Bragg's commentary on them, I think you'll all agree that they're all worth reading and they all change the world. If you like the type of books that we're featuring on this, please do give us a like, subscribe to our channel and come over to readingforwisdom.com where we feature much more material to educate and excite and delight you. Thank you.